Hello, and welcome to the Yarning Over the Days podcast episode three. Yay! I want to welcome all of my new and also returning viewers. I actually received quite a few new viewers recently because Eva from the Charm of It podcast mentioned my podcast in her podcast, and that was such a complete honor because I'm such a big fan of Eva and her podcast and her attention to detail with her knitting. So that was a huge honor and a surprise also. So thank you, and I just want to welcome everyone who's coming to view this podcast. It's such an honor that you will find what I have to say about knitting and sewing and crocheting interesting. So I'm really, really appreciative of that. You can find me on Instagram Ravelry, and also I have a blog. My Instagram and Ravelry name, it is the same. It's Cleo CMC, that's C-L-E-O-C-M-C, and my blog is yarningoverthedays.wordpress.com, and I will have all of this information in the description box. Okay, so let's get started. Today, it may be a quite lengthy episode because I did travel home to Alabama. I am a doctoral student here in South Carolina, and I travel home to Alabama because I had a break between the summer one and also the summer two session, about a two week break. And so I really got homesick and I get homesick quite often. So I travel home as much as I can. And I travel home and I stay home for about a week and a half, well, a little less than a week and a half. So I saw my parents and my nieces and my nephew and my sisters and it was all just so wonderful. And so I really enjoyed that visit home as I always do. So I was thinking about recording on that Sunday because I was still at my parents' home on while I was in Alabama. However, I still had a few things that I wanted to show you and talk about here in South Carolina. And so I figured I could wait a few days and come to you on Wednesday or Thursday, and today's Thursday, to record and everything should be fine. So, but because of this longer break, I do have more things to talk about. So I hope that it will move along efficiently and I'll just get started because I have quite a few things I want to talk about today. So first we're going to start with our finished, well with my finished objects, which I always love to start with the finished objects. Last week and the previous episode before that, I was telling you that I was participating in the Outfit Along, which is hosted by Andy of UntanglingKnots.com and also Lauren of Ladybird.com. And I showed you my finished dress from the Outfit Along, and I also finished my cardigan, the Anaheim cardigan, which was the suggested cardigan for the Outfit Along, which was designed by Andy Satchelin. And I just, I absolutely love it. I adore it. It's just, it's always great when things turn out exactly how you envision. And I know that when I was talking about the outfit along and I was talking about my outfit and I was envisioning how I wanted it to go, then it turned out exactly in my, how I envisioned it in my mind. And the fit is just nice and perfect. But before I start talking about the details, I'll insert a picture of the finished outfit here. Okay, so now let's talk about the cardigan. The cardigan is the Anaheim cardigan by Andy Satchelin. Let me show you an image of the. So this is the cardigan. That's the lovely Andy modeling her cardigan, her version of the cardigan. And so the style, of course, is the crop length is on par with my style and also the fitted length is on par with my style. I knew that it would work well with my fit and flare dresses. However, I've never made an actual wrap style type uh, cardigan. I never even owned a wrap style dress. I don't, yeah, I never owned a wrap style dress. So this was something new for me, but I still like the look of the cardigan. So I figured why not try something new? So I did complete the cardigan. And I really, really love it. I absolutely love it. And everything was just wonderful. So I'll talk about a few of the details. I used the Knit Picks Wool of the Andy Sport and the color is avocado. The pattern actually calls for a DK weight yarn. 
However, I didn't want to shop for new yarn and I wanted to use some of my stash. So I had this yarn in my stash. It was actually going to be a previous pattern. This yarn was supposed to be used for a previous pattern by Andy, which is her Elsa jacket, which was a crochet pattern. But I lost that project when I was moving and so I still had some yarn left over. So I figured that I'd use it for this project here. And I really am pleased with the choice. Because it was a sport weight yarn and the pattern called for a DK weight, I, what did I do? I did get gauge actually, and I actually went down a needle size because I used to size five, US size five needles because I wanted to, because it was a sport weight, I didn't want it to stretch out or be too open. I wanted it to stay within the correct size of the needle for the yarn. The suggested needle size for the yarn is what I'm saying. So I used that needle, the size five needle, and the pattern actually calls for a DK weight. Let me read this yarn with the US 7 US 7 needle but I used the sport weight with the US 5 needle and it has a smaller needle and a larger needle and the larger needle for the pattern is supposed to be a US 9 but I used the US 7 for the needle so I went down two sizes for each of the needles so instead of the 7 I used the size 5 and instead of the size 9 I used to size seven for the larger needle and it worked out beautifully and because I was working with um, a s smaller weight yarn then I did get gauge actually by blocking it heavily but I didn't want to block that finished garments quite so heavily so what I did was I went up a size when I needed it I usually make the extra small of in these patterns but this time I made the small and I stayed with those needle sizes and everything worked out so beautifully when I wet blocked it, I didn't have to stretch it out. And I typically do the same blocking method for most of my garments. And sometimes I would spray block garments, but this time I, but most of the time I like to wet block it. And I use, I wet block it using Rapture's, um, Rapture product with Jasmine oil scent. I think it was Jasmine or not Jasmine oil, but just Jasmine scent. Oh, and it smells so good. <laughs> it still smells so wonderful. And so I just soaked it for 15 minutes with the rapture and then I blocked it. And the i edging is I think one of the most beautiful details of the cardigan. It goes all the way around. And I never did the i edging before. That was completely new to me. And I remember I was saying that I was going to look at some YouTube videos and also search the internet for just a few more clarification or instructions on how to do it but none of the things that I found were helpful or it really didn't help me as much as I would have liked so I just simply sat down and I just looked at the pattern and read it and then I envisioned on um, how it was supposed to work up and I just started it and then I saw it all come together and it was quite simple and so that worked out beautifully um, one of my other favorite parts of the cardigan are, are the buttons because it's like, it's a perfect match. They were just a perfect match. I found these buttons at Joann's for only 50 cents. Can you believe that? And the pad, the cardigan only requires two buttons. So you have this outside button, which you'll wrap the outer part in. And then you have this inside button here. Right here. And you have an inside button in which you'll attach the other side of the cardigan. I think I'll try it on even though I showed the image just so you can get an idea of how it's supposed to be worn. Okay so of course and also Andy stated that it could be worn open like this for a more modern fit and I'm not sure how often I would wear it in this way but you know maybe if I had a full day of traveling and moving about with my family my nieces and nephews and I you know was running around and eating and I didn't want to be all trussed up or put together then I think this is a nice relaxed fit I think it looks nice open but this is how I typically I'm sure I'm going to wear it most of the time so you'll just attach the left front 
with the onto that inside button and then you just overlap it and attach this side and I really like it so much and I'll just give you a 380 And this is how the cardigan fits. I know that this will be a wardrobe staple because I've already went into my closet and I looked at different dresses and also it pairs well with my skirts. So it's just a nice cardigan. And it doesn't seem like it would be a basic cardigan, excuse me, initially, but once I actually created it and paired it with things, different things in my closet, then I know that I'm going to get a lot of wear out of it. So I'm excited about how this project turned out and I can't say um, anything better about it. Um, and these instructions were quite clear as usual. Um, her images uh, were beautiful. And so I had no problems with the pattern, no errors, nothing. I just flowed quite free through um, quite easily. It flowed quite easily. I did um, forget to do a lace repeat on the left front, but it was near the end. You know how I was telling you in the last episode, you have to do the lace repeat where it fits. And you can kind of see how I have more stockinette in this section here. But as you can see, by that point, I was so done with working the body and I figured that this, it wouldn't matter because it would be worn like that. And also it's just not that noticeable. So I didn't feel like ripping it back and I wasn't going to rip it back. <laughs> so I just kept on going along and it's such a minor thing. And most of my garments, well, I would say most, but some of my garments, they have their little imperfections and it is what it is. That's what makes it lovely and handmade and good. So that is the Anaheim cardigan. And that's what I've completed on the knit with my knitting. Now we can talk about other finished objects. I've still been doing quite a bit of sewing and I'm not sure if it was the outfit along or that brought back my inspiration for sewing, but I've really been enjoying sewing more and more lately. And when I've been sewing, I've been thinking about things in my closet and also my sweaters and cardigans and things that the items would match up with and go well with. So that's what I've been doing with sewing. Let me just put up this card again. Okay, so the first sewing item that I created was, oh, I'm actually wearing it, so I might as well talk about it. It's the Hollyburn skirt. I created a Hollyburn skirt already. I showed it to you last week in that pink denim. And I told you I was thinking about creating a gray one just because I need a basic gray skirt that was a staple. I had a gray midi skirt that I purchased from a boutique back in Durham, North Carolina that I actually used to like a lot. But then I lost a bit of weight and it doesn't fit right. And so it falls down. And so I need another basic gray um, skirt. And this, I knew that I wanted to make it. I could follow everything exactly as I did with the other version and I made this is the Sewaholic Hollyburn skirt, and this, the version I made was version B. As you can see, the pattern comes in different lengths, and I made that mid-length, which comes to my knee. And I also, and that version also has the button tabs. And my buttons came from Joann's also, and I like it because from far away it looks white, but up close you see that it has gray dots that pick up that gray from the skirt. Other than that, I can't say any more about the skirt because I follow everything exactly as it should have been with the pattern and it went lovely and I really like the skirt and I've been getting quite a bit of wear <laughs> out of it and I took it home with me during that break and I, yes, it's, it's quite versatile, actually maybe too versatile because I can put it with different tops and cardigans and different types of shoes and it just works perfectly well. So I'm pretty pleased with it. Oh, the fabric is, it was on sale for $4.99 and then I received 30% off at Joann's. So 
this fabric though it's like it was a polyester and cotton blend and that was quite different to work with because the polyester had this like stickiness to it like how can i say this you know how you cut out the pieces the pattern pieces and the different pattern pieces was kind of catching on to each other so that was different and i wasn't sure how it was going to work up but then when i actually worked the skirt up and i always wear slips under my skirts then the fit is nice and i haven't had a problem with it so that went well so after i created the holly burn skirt i immediately wanted to start another holly burn skirt and i created a gold version and i like gold a lot because gold works well in my wardrobe i have a satchel that i carry every day that is gold it really um, matches this skirt quite closely and i even have a pair of gold loafers in this colors so as you can see it just goes well and you can see, see it's kind of similar to this cardigan i'm wearing but um yeah i did the same version because it's my favorite version because i like the length of this uh skirt because it's a good length for when i'm doing what school presentations and also it's great for church functions and so it comes at quite a nice length and it's not too long and not too short and it's perfectly my style the fabric is um denim yet again i like denim i like skirts that are in worked in denim and this denim is a bit more lightweight and drapier than that denim that I made from my pink Holly Burn skirt that I talked about in the previous episode. And I actually prefer the thicker denim because it kind of made the Holly Burn skirt hold its shape a bit more. But I still like this denim. It has a nice drape. And I'm still really pleased with it. Again, quite a versatile piece. I wore it quite a bit when I went home. Um, and also with both uh, skirts, I received compliments um, I, with the pink Holly Burn skirt and the yellow Holly Burn skirt. I was actually stopped while I was in the store and also getting some food uh, with people asking me about the skirts. And one lady said, where do you get your clothes? Because I don't see anything like that in the store. So, and I let her know that I did make it. And the other lady wanted to know also because she was wondering, she's like, so different. So... Yeah, they're hits, and I really like these patterns. And I ordered the denim, it's Kaufman, if I'm not mistaken, denim. And I ordered it from fabric.com, and it came so quickly. Like, I ordered it one day, and it came, like, the next day. So that was surprising. All right. And my final finished object was, is a blouse. I actually had um, quite a bit of fabric left over from my Miet skirt that I showed last week in that denim fabric with the hearts. So I decided I wanted to make a basic um, blouse because I also, let's see, I use Simplicity 8523 and I made this version. And it's funny because my version looks very similar to the illustration here. But I actually purchased this pattern quite a few years ago from the thrift store. It was only 50 cents. And I remember I was with my mom back in Alabama and I thought that it would be a nice uh, pattern because the tops on it, they're simple and basic and I think that they can highlight um, fabric. Yeah, interesting fabrics and I think, and I want to use it again. So I made version B and I like that high neck version. And this is it. Um, out and also, I wanted to say, I will insert pictures of the Holly Burn skirts, the gray and the gold version, and also an image of me wearing this blouse with the gray Holly Burn skirt. I'll insert it here. Okay, so. I really like how it turned out. Something new that I did was in the back, it's just a button loop that connects things and I had to create a thread loop, which I never did before I looked at YouTube videos. And I don't think that I did it such a great job. I don't know if you can see, but I don't think I did such a great job. And I think it doesn't matter because once it's 
button up you don't see the thread loop it does the job of keeping it together but I think next time what I'll do is I may crochet over that thread loop or something to give it a neater finish just because it would be more aesthetically pleasing to me in my mind and everything else was simple this as you can see the shirt is basic it doesn't really have any shaping except for some darts here to give it a little shaping in the front and at first I was not I was hesitant about the length of this of this shirt you can see it fits comes at about mid hip here and I wasn't sure about the length I thought it was quite long but then I wore it with some jeans and loafers and I actually thought the length was perfect because it fell at mid hip length and it just looked really nice and that's why I like a lot of my shirts to fall and um, again I wore this in the store with just some jeans one day and I received a compliment about the shirt so I think that is a hit and I also like wearing it tucked into the skirts as I've shown you in the picture and so it goes nicely of course with the gray skirt but I also think it'll look nice with the gold skirt too so I'll probably wear that combination and that's why I like creating these pieces because I like that I can remix the clothes quite a bit with different to get different outfit combinations and that's always a good thing so that concludes the finished objects and so now I want to talk about some works in progress first I have a crochet work in progress which I think this is the first time a crochet project is appearing on this channel or this podcast so let's talk about this is the moonlit shawl and it's a design by Sandra Paul from Cherry Heart she has a podcast the Cherry Heart podcast and she also has a website which I follow her blog even before she had the podcast or the Instagram and I used to follow her blog year I started following it years ago it's cherryheart.co.uk and if you have time check out her blog because her attention to detail and the images that she creates of her finished items is just it's so inspiring and so beautiful so Sandra actually showed I picked up the wrong project hold on so Sandra actually showed this uh, shawl a couple of episodes back on her podcast and I thought it was the most beautiful thing I'm not sure if it was the yarn she used or even maybe it was just the yarn highlighted the stitch pattern but I immediately wanted to create a shawl and I need a shawl because I have a tendency to lose shawls I've made shawls in the past and I have no idea what any of them are I'm not sure if they're my mother's house my parents house I'm not sure if I left them in North Carolina I don't know what happens to them but I always lose them so I needed to make another and I didn't want a shawl that was like a full shawl that drape or that would be really bulky all in this area and that's why I like this shawl because it kind of had a good depth it wasn't too small it wasn't too long it was just the perfect length that I was looking for and I'll show it to you and this is the moonlit shawl and that's so beautiful oh it's so pretty so the interesting about this pattern is that you can use uh, you can choose to use either a DK weight or a fingering weight she had the instructions for both and so I chose to use a fingering weight because I wanted it to be lighter and drapier. And I also just went to my stash and I had some Knit Picks palette. And I had some colors and I was thinking about either doing a uh, red, but I didn't know if the red would be odd. Uh, I just didn't think, I wasn't leaning towards the red and I didn't want the red. And then I was thinking about this deep purple color, but then I decided on cream because I thought that the cream would be classic, yet elegant, timeless, everything that I was going for. So this is where I'm at so far with the yarn, with the, not the yarn, but with the project. And I actually was further along because I was so excited that when she released this pattern, I immediately bought it that day and I immediately cast on the project. However, things happened and there was an error in the pattern and she released a new version of the pattern and so I had to rip back I was about halfway down with the shawl but I ripped it back but I wasn't too worried about ripping back because I crochet 
pretty quickly, pretty fast. So I knew that I could work it up pretty easily. And um, again, so I just ripped back the the shawl and I started it again with the new version of the pattern. And everything has been going along really smoothly. And it's nice to know that the Knit Picks palette can stand up to being ripped. The yarn still has um, a little hook. Still has beautiful definition. There aren't really any fuzzies or anything like that. It doesn't look worn out. So I'm really pleased with that. And I'll be working on this. I don't know. Maybe if I finish cutting at a good hour, then I'll work on this tonight. And just get it done while looking at some Netflix or something. So I'm excited about this project. And uh, I'm excited to have a shawl. Also, I think that if I like the fit of it a lot, I'm thinking that this would be the Christmas gifts for my sisters and my mom because then I could play with different colors and use their favorite colors. But it's so funny because all of their favorite colors are purple. All of them love purple. So, but if I use the Knit Picks palette, the good thing about Knit Picks palette is that it has 150 colors. So I'm thinking I may use different shades of purple for my sisters and my mom for Christmas. And maybe I'll also pair it with the brooch. I think that'd be a nice gift. I hope it'll be a nice gift. <laughs> so that's the first work in progress. The next work in progress I talked about last week, and I'll talk about it a little bit again, but I won't go into much detail because I didn't get much done. I worked some more on my pink socks. I was just on the first sock. And I did about 10 more rolls. And I'm using the Knit Picks palette in Cotton Candy. Again, I am simply creating this pattern because I want to see how a pair of 100% wool socks will work up. And I saw in the description on Knit Picks site that you can use the palette yarn for socks, so I was just curious. And the pattern I'm using is from the book Socktacular, which I've used before. And I think that this book is a great purchase. If you're looking for a sock book with sock patterns that aren't basic, but that has a good... Okay, so what I was saying was that if you're looking for a basic sock book that has patterns that are some maybe more complex, some maybe a bit more simple, and then it also has different suggestions for construction methods, you may do a different cuffs, different heel types, different toes, then I think I highly recommend this book. You can just get an idea of how beautiful and diverse the socks are. And also the book is at such a great price and I still think it's at such a sale price on Knit Picks website. So check it out um, if you're looking for a good sock book. So I'm still working on those socks and hold on a second. The sock I'm creating is the called the four leaf clover sock if I'm not mistaken or the clover sock the four leaf clover sock Let me see. That. and I did not do the peacoat cuff I did a twisted rib cuff because I saw another project that used it, the twisted rib cuff and I liked it and there's not much to say about it. I'm still on the first sock. And I talked about it the last episode. So it's still a work in progress. And I did do about 10 extra rows since I last showed it to you last week. And I'm going for a five inch leg with the socks. And that's my the typical length I like for my socks because I don't like the socks to be too long. And I hope to be working on the heel pretty soon. Again, it's not a project that's at the forefront in terms of the different projects I'm working on. It's just something that's good to pick up when I'm different places and I just want to have something to do with my hands. And it's such a small, nice project to take along. So that's that. So now we're gonna talk about acquired treasures. I think I usually do the archive treasure first. I don't know, I may have switched it up. I don't know. But we'll talk about the acquired treasures first and then I'll move into the archive treasures. As I mentioned, I traveled home the previous week and I had such a great time. 
And every time I travel home, um, my dad he'll will go to Joe Ants together, and not every time, but quite often. And I like to go to the Joe Ants um, store in Montgomery, Alabama, which is the capital of Alabama, because that Joe Ants is is huge. It's humongous. It's larger than the Joe Ants that was in Durham, North Carolina. Larger than the Joe Ants in Raleigh, North Carolina, and Raleigh is the capital of North Carolina, and it's even larger than the Joe Ants here in Columbia. And so the Columbia Joanne's is quite small. So I knew I wanted to go there and my dad, he purchased some fabric for me and I'll just show you the fabric and we'll talk a little bit about it. So first I'll talk about, I purchased this pattern here and I want to create this version because I have a black dress that's similar to that that gets quite a lot of wear and I wanted to create my own. And the black dress that I purchased that was similar to that. And it's kind of like an overall dress. Yes, the overall dress that I created, um, not that I created, that I have that's similar to that. It came from Mod Cloth. But I didn't want to purchase another from Mod Cloth. Mod Cloth. I wanted to create my own. So I wanted to create one in the corduroy fabric. But this is not the time of year where they're, they have a nice stock of corduroy. Because the corduroy at that Joe Ants was all brown and I'm not a big fan of brown and so I knew I didn't want brown so I was actually giving up on getting fabric for that overall dress and I was walking around the store and then it just came to me that when it looked nice in a classic denim and I was like oh yes overalls denim match made in heaven so I went back to the fabric section and I got this basic denim and so I got three yards, but I think I may have too much. I know I have too much. <laughs> you can see I have too much. So I'll do something with the extra fabric that I have. And I'm looking forward to making that. And I'll probably start cutting out this pattern maybe in the next two to three weeks. And also this pattern would be nice to try out because I've never created buttonholes before. And I do have that function on my sewing machine. Quite a few buttonhole options on my sewing machine. And so it'll be nice to try it out. And I've been avoiding it for a while. So I figured this would be the perfect project because it has just those two buttonholes there. And I think there's a buttonhole on the back. So I'll try it out there. And the buttons I purchased were on sale at Jones for 50 cents. And I just went with the blue. Just to like, I wanted it to have a streamlined effect with that denim. I didn't want it to stand out. I wanted the buttons to kind of blend with the jumper. Then I also bought some floral fabrics. Well, I didn't buy it. <laughs> My dad bought them for me. But I wanted to make some blouses with these floral fabrics. And these fabrics actually have this like metallic sheen. I don't know if the camera is picking it up, but there's like silver flowers there. And that's, I think that's really pretty. That's really lovely. And I didn't even know the other floral fabric has that metallic sheen also surrounding the white. And I'm not sure if the camera's picking it up, but that was a nice um, effect. So I want to make some blouses. I do know I want to make um, maybe the basic blouse, maybe version version D or the version B. I did one of these two with the floral, with this floral. And I also want to make a blouse with this. But I'm thinking I'm leaning towards a blouse that has a Peter Pan collar because I like Peter Pan collars and I have a pattern that's been in my stash for a while that has a Peter Pan collar. Uh, this is New Look A6193 and I think I want to create that version there. But instead of having the contrast fabric, I want to go with have everything in this floral print. I think that'd be really nice. So, yeah, so that was fun. That trip to Joe Ann's and also getting new fabric was fun. And so, yes, I was happy about that. Also, um, before I left town, I did go to Joe Ann's and I purchased some more denim for another Holly Burn skirt. And I like the buttons. I think they're a perfect match to go with that Holly Burn skirt. So 
those are the acquired treasures uh, for my future sewing projects. And I think that they're all great choices and I think they'll be versatile pieces. And I have another, some more acquired treasures for my knitting things. When I started making uh, socks, then I noticed um, quite a few beautiful socks and projects on Ravelry that was created with Knit Picks for Leachy yarn. But Knit Picks for Leachy, I don't know if it comes out in different seasons or different times, but there weren't any available on the site, so I couldn't purchase any. And I kind of just, I was thinking about purchasing some from D Stash on Ravelry, but then Knit Picks posted on Instagram that they had a new summer line. And I was like, oh, you know, so I wanted to purchase some. So I bought this um, Knit Picks for Leachy in Cheshire, Cheshire, I don't know, and <laughs> Grin. And I like that it had shades of pink and turquoise in there. Some of my favorite colors and I like that they were together and this will be my first time making socks and self striping yarn and from what I hear from other uh, knitting podcasters the self striping yarn keeps things interesting because I mentioned that I got bored when I was working up a pair of my pair of vanilla socks and so I'm hoping that with the self striping yarn things will be interesting and I'll see it worked up and I also got the color mint chip and this has beautiful shades of tur turquoise and grays and even a deep brown, but I don't mind that deep brown being in there because it's paired so beautifully with the other colors. And I'm thinking that I wanna do a contrast heel sock, a gray contrast heel with the socks that I create with this. And then that was my order. I just placed the order for two different colorways. But then I was kind of regretting not getting another colorway. But the Knit Pits Felicia is pretty popular, which I didn't know. And so when I went back to try to get the other color, then they said they were out of stock. And so I asked to be notified, and they did notify me for another color. And I did purchase that color. And I like this color a lot. And this color is Stone Harbor. And it has, again, that same those same turquoise colors that was on the previous two skeins, but it has that little beautiful pale yellow and gray in it. And again, I think I want to do a contrast heel in gray. And I have some Knit Picks um, Stroll in Dove Heather, which is a beautiful gray. And I think I want to do those heels with that. So I'm excited about creating some vanilla socks and I need to create some vanilla socks because I am so behind in the box of socks knit along. So I need to do some vanilla socks to get things moving along quickly and to get closer to my 12 pairs of socks before December because oh, half of the year is already gone. I can't believe we're in July already. So I really, really need to get to work. So those are the acquired treasures. And now we can move into the archive treasure for today. And I'm wearing the Myrna cardigan, which was designed by Andy Satchelin. And it's only fitting that I'm wearing this cardigan because I created this cardigan from the first outfit along that they hosted. It. And it was, I created it for my outfit. And I just showed you a cardigan and my finished objects from the outfit along. So I like this cardigan so much. This is a cardigan I wear on hot days a lot because it's just, the yarn is lightweight. It, the yarn is Miss Babs Yowza and squash blossom i think that was the name of the color if i'm not mistaken and the details on my ravelry page it's been a while about three years since i created this cardigan and i created it to match a owl dress that i created for the outfit alone and i love that dress i wear that dress a lot i took it i just was wearing it last week actually no not even last week monday and so i and i wore this cardigan with that dress and so i really like this cardigan and I think the yarn is so beautiful. It's um, it's not just a saturated yellow. It has different shades of like deep yellows, oranges, and golds that I think works perfectly. But it still looks really nice together. It just works works really well. And I really like. It's a quick cardigan. I remember creating it so quickly that I made another Marina cardigan in like the following week or so. And it has this beautiful, let me button it up so you can see. So 
So around the edging, there's this beautiful little eyelet detail. And it's also mimicked in the sleeves also. And the sleeves, they're kind of slightly puffed out. But one of my favorite details is the back, which is this part here. That keyhole back, I think that that was a nice little touch to such a simple knit. I think that this cardigan would be great for a person who wanted to create their first cardigan, yet you didn't want it to be plain and you wanted to have some interesting details in it. And I really think that this would be the perfect um, cardigan for a new time sweater knitter or person who wanted to get into garment knitting. And I can't think of anything more. Oh, yes. Um, when I first made this sweater, I mean, this cardigan, I had these, I used the recommended button size that was suggested in the pattern, but the buttons kept, it would have stayed closed, kept popping open. And the buttons were the yellow buttons. However, I just simply switched them out for a larger button and everything has worked out. And I've had the brown buttons on for quite a while. I've had them, I switched them out about two years ago and I've been wearing it like this ever since and it's um just a nice versatile piece as i was saying i like to wear it on hot days and we've been having a lot of hot days in um south carolina oh my goodness it's been so hot and i wore it to work today and i usually just wear it draped open when i'm outside because as i stated the yarn is light and it blows really nicely in the wind and it's short sleeve and it's just yeah i like everything about this cardigan i even have another version in blue because I liked it uh, so much and how quickly the pattern worked up that I made another. So that is the archive treasure for today. And I'm still pleased with it years later and it's wearing up quite well. The yarn has worked up so nicely. I don't think there's a little bit of peeling, like almost non-existent under the arms. But other than that, it looks exactly how it looked when I first put it together. It's just, it's a beautiful yarn and I want to make something else with this yarn. I just haven't found the perfect project for it yet, but one day. Well, that concludes the archive treasure. Check out that pattern by Andy Satchelin if you're interested or if you wanted to get into garment knitting, then I can recommend this as a first garment. And also, that's it. So now we're going to talk about what's been catching my interest. Okay, so my sister and her husband are expecting a baby boy in November. I was so excited. I went to the gender reveal party on Thursday of last week, which was about a week ago. And it was revealed that it was going to be a boy. So as soon as they revealed that it was going to be a boy, I got to work looking at sewing patterns, looking at knitting patterns, trying to figure out what blankets I wanted to make. So that's been catching my interest. Baby stuff baby knits, baby sewn items, baby crochet blankets, baby stuff. I've been looking everywhere. And so my sister actually sent me an image of something she wanted me to make, which was, you know, those newborn baby props for the pictures that they have. It was this, um, it was cute. It was a baby in like a caterpillar outfit. He looked like a caterpillar and it was crochet. And she sent me an image and she asked if I could make that. And while it's, it was cute, it's not typically what I would, if I had a baby, would put my baby in, but she liked it. And I said, you know, I do want to honor her request and that I want to make something that the person will appreciate and like. And then it was crochet and it was so basic. It looked like it was just double crochet worked in a round to create a tube with a hat. So I know I could work that up in a night, probably not even a whole night and one sitting so I, I will make her that also but then I want to give something to the baby that is more of his auntie style which has more of that I don't know classic style that I like that vintage feel vintage flair so I've been looking at little cardigans for baby boys and it's kind of difficult to find good cardigan and sweater patterns for baby boys there's so many cute things for baby girls but i wasn't finding many things for baby boys and my sorority sister she actually had a baby boy some years ago and i did make a vest for him that was so adorable 
And I was thinking maybe I could do that again, a vest for the baby boy, and she liked it a lot. But then I was thinking, oh, I just really want to make a cardigan. And then I even want to make a sew a little bow tie to go with the cardigan. Maybe he could wear it to church. And I remember some years ago, Alana Dacos, she made a baby boy cardigan and she made a sewed a bow tie to go with it. And I thought that was the most clever and beautiful idea. So I want to do that also. So I looked at the Gramps cardigan, which was by, it's by Tim Can Knit, so if I'm not mistaken. And so I was thinking about that one. But then while I was browsing the Ravelry patterns for baby boy cardigan patterns, then I saw Alana Dacos actually created, had a free Ravelry download for a basic baby cardigan. And let me see if I can find a better image. for a basic baby cardigan. And I like that. I like that a lot. I think it's really adorable. When I make it, I plan to switch the button hole to the correct male side. But other than that, I'm going to keep the pattern exactly as printed. And I really like Alana Dacos. Her designs are so beautiful. I even made her um, rustic leaves hat pattern some years ago. And it was so pretty. Oh my goodness. But my hair, it got too big for the um, beret. And so I gave it to my mom. And so, and I have a Coastal Knits book that she made with Hannah Fettig also. So she makes the most classic, beautiful, elegant pieces. And like for years I've been wanting her Botanical Knits books, part one and two. So when I saw that she had this free, um, download available. I was very excited to find this. And I think my little nephew will look adorable in this. So I purchased the yarn when I was back home and I knew my sister has four children already and she also has two stepchildren. So six children in the house. And I know my sister is not going to want any wool yarn or yarn that she has to hand wash because she's going to throw everything in the washing machine and it just makes life easier. So I was looking for a nice acrylic that could be hard wearing but still feel good to the baby. So I went with Red Heart um, with Love. And I like Red Heart with Love. I've made a hat before with this because it's not as hard or scratchy as the Red Heart Super Saver. And it has a nice, strong, yet cushy feel to it. And I think that this would be a nice color for the cardigan. And I think my sister will appreciate the fiber content also. And the color is Bluebell. And I was going for, I didn't want this really deep blue, but I didn't want this like pastel-y unicorn blue. <laughs> yeah, that's weird. But I didn't want that. So I thought that this blue was the perfect compromise, the perfect color. And I like it so much, so. I'm excited about knitting up a little baby cardigan for the baby boy who's doing November. And I'm still really thinking about the Gramps cardigan a lot. So I might make a Gramps cardigan also for the baby, the Gramps cardigan in gray. I think I had the gray would be so dapper, so cute. So maybe I can make two cardigans and a bow tie for the baby. And also, okay, I want to make everything for this baby, but I also want to make a blanket for the baby also. And I'm not sure if I want to knit the blanket or crochet the blanket because I've seen quite a few adorable uh, crochet patterns for baby blankets. So I have baby items on the mind quite a bit. And this next thing that's been catching my interest, it just caught my interest today. The pattern was literally released today. I saw it on my Ravelry feed this morning and I was like, oh my goodness, that is beyond beautiful. And it is a design by Amy Apple. And last week I was wearing one of Amy Apple's designs, the Frenchie blouse. And this cardigan is a part of the same Pink Ladies collection. But this is called the Cha Cha Cardigan. And I think every time I say the cardigan name, I think about this on Cha Cha Wrist Food. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, so this, when I saw this design, she 
posted an image of it and I was like, oh my goodness, that is the most adorable, beautiful thing. Let me see if I can find a good image for you all. Okay. So again, Amy's designs are has a wonderful vintage flair and retro flair, which of course is on par with my style. So I really like this design. And um when I saw it, I thought it was so beautiful. And then another thing I like about the design is that it blends together a little bit of crochet with knitting. And so two things I like, just join forces together. So that's always a good thing. But then I saw one of her test knitters showed a version, and this was by Casey Mara. And if you don't follow Casey Mara's podcast, oh my goodness, stop everything and follow her podcast because it's amazing. Her Instagram feed is pretty amazing also, so follow her there. So Casey posted on her Instagram the most stunning, delicate pink version of this cardigan. And it made me fall in love with the cardigan even more. I mean, I had just saw Amy's version on Instagram and I was commenting that I loved it. Then my feed showed Casey's version. I was like, oh my goodness. And that's still the deal. And I was like, I have to make this cardigan. Then I bought the prom pattern immediately. And I saw that she does Quince & Company's Chickadee. Can it get any better than this? I love Quince & Company's Chickadee. So I have another excuse to purchase Quince & Company's Chickadee. So I was thinking, I'm not being creative at all. I love Casey's version so much. I'm going to make a delicate pink version or pale pink version also because it was so pretty. You all know pink is my favorite color and it was so beautiful. So, I came home and I looked at, pulled out my Quince & Company's um, wool line little sample thing and I was looking for the pinks. And they had these two pinks here. And I like that dogwood a lot. But a part of me is really flocking to this shell. And I think that's so beautiful. So I may purchase the shell. And I'm going to purchase it actually pretty soon tonight because I want to cast on this project immediately. And so the only other choice I have to make is for the little detail, the crochet detail, I need some scrap fingering yarn, which I have plenty of. And I'm not sure if I want to Mimic's Casey version because I think she had a deep purple trim which looked very girly and just beautiful. And I do have some a deep purple fingering and knit this palette urchin, which I think will look nice with it. But then I also have some I was wondering if green would be a nice touch, like put together two of my favorite colors. And this is Quinson Company's Finch Fingering weight yarn. And this color is lichen. So I don't know, purple trim or green trim? I can't make up my mind. I hope to make it, I'll make it up by the time that I put it together. I don't know, I just don't know, but I know that I'm very, very, very excited about this project. So, yes, I can't say anything more about it. I look forward to sharing it with you all. Okay, I was just looking over it. Yes, yeah, so that will be really fun. And so as you can see, I'm still feeling really, really inspired with crafty things. And I'm surprised how much I got done um, that I was able to show you even in this episode because one week I didn't get much crafting done. I think I even told you because I had final examinations. Well, not examinations, it's a final examination singular. Um, in my course that I was taking for the summer one session and oh my goodness that class turned out to be more intense than I expected 60% of my grade depended on yes yeah, 60% of my grade depended on group projects for that class so my grade depended on four other people and oh my goodness it was like a moment of stress for me. 
But everything went well. The final examination went well. I, of course, could have did better, but I received an A out of the course. So, yay! When I saw that grade, all I could do was scream and thank the Lord. And I ran to my dad and I told my dad and my mother because they knew that I was kind of stressing about that course. And that course is a part of my cognate in which we have to take courses from another discipline. So my discipline is library and information science, but I wanted to take my cognate in business classes because with cultural institutions, you know, people going to those places, they're declining. And I was hoping that this marketing course would give me some pointers and tips on how to better promote these organizations so that it could get in more attendance and more drive to these um, cultural institutions so they don't fall by the wayside. So, yeah, the class was really, really great. It was a great class and I've learned so much. The last time I took some business courses was about five years ago and things change in that world. In the marketing field and the business world, things change so rapidly especially with how we do things and influence that social media is having and the different platforms. And I learned so much. And even how businesses are being ran and business to business interactions. So it was quite interesting, even though it was a moment of stress for me. Excuse me. So that concludes this episode. And I'm so happy if you stuck with me through it all. And I look forward to seeing you all in about two weeks' time. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs>